Thank you for visiting the Coin Lady channel again. Will there not be enough XRP tokens to power global economic transactions, even with a maximum ceiling of 100 billion? Just so you know, yesterday Ripple saw a large transaction sending XRP to an unidentified wallet address. Furthermore, Ripple's chief technology officer David Schwartz recently addressed worries about the XRP ledger's missing Genesis block by referencing a comparable situation with Ethereum. Finally, Rollup will think about looking into markets outside of the US for its possible IPO, after the CEO's admission. Gara, creator of Black Swan Capitalist, recently made a remark on X vs NL, in which she indicated that destroying XRP coins would be futile. It was at this critical burn milestone when Al Jarrah expressed his concerns on the burning of XRP. Did you know that the number of tokens burned off the XRP ledger has topped 12 million units? We discovered this last week. Avenos Finance, co-founder of Panos Makers, and other prominent members of the community see this milestone favorably since it highlights XRP's status as a deflationary asset. But the founder of Black Swan Capitalist Party has come out and said that XRP burning are pointless. The global economy may not be able to withstand XRP's 100 billion supply ceiling, he claims. Burning XRP tokens may sound like a good plan at the time, but Algebra said it was unnecessary. He recognizes the enormous supply of XRP as a commercial proposition for companies like Ripple. He said that anyone who believes that 100 billion XRP will be sufficient to support the world economy has a fundamental misunderstanding of Ripple's purpose. While the idea of destroying XRP tokens is appealing, it is superfluous. Additionally, Algera argued that there could not be enough XRP to satisfy demand when it rolls around, particularly when looking at hypothetical future demand that the mainstream hasn't even considered. Nevertheless, Moon Studios founder Youssef Alred shot down the notion that Ripple's financial objectives could sustain XRP over the long run. I'm sure those objectives include you and me, Alred said in response to OWL Reda's question. He went on to say that burns are what make XRP valuable because they provide a scarcity aspect. At the same time, crypto enthusiast Jason Douglas of the United Kingdom sought to provide light on the expected demand for XRP in the banking sector. Douglas calculated that $200 billion would be XRP's share if it were to grab 2% of JP Morgan's daily trillion dollar turnover. There will only ever be 100 billion XRP tokens in circulation. If this were to happen, according to Doublelift, the price of XRP would need to skyrocket. Rather than aggressively reducing the quantity of XRP, the XRPL burn mechanism serves to prevent network spam. But most people in the crypto world think burns are important since they might affect the value of XRP. If you would want to be the first to know about any new developments with XRP, you can subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. The data revealed that the cryptocurrency payment provider sent 80 million XRP, or $45,68,000,000, to an address that was not identified. Data from XRP scans indicates that the money came from a Ripple spending wallet called Ripple One. Among the 200 million XRP released from Ripple's escrow accounts are the tokens that were transferred not long ago. You may remember that on January 1, 2024, Ripple released 1 billion XRP. The company released 80% of the 800 million XRP held in escrow a few hours later, and the remaining 20% 20% of the coins were sent to the spending address of the firm. 100 million XRP were initially transmitted via Ripple. The payment processor sent an additional 80 million XRP to the same location on January 7. Ripple One's balance has increased to 46.3 million XRP, or $26.4 million, after the two transactions. In contrast, the receiver address has not yet performed a transaction since receiving 80 million XRP from Ripple, as a result, its balance has increased to 97.8 million XRP, or $55.8 million. In addition, Schwartz addressed some concerns voiced by a community member about the XRP ledger's peculiar beginning at block while making certain recent revelations. A total of 32,569 intermediaries have expressed doubt and stressed the need for openness for XRP holders. Please explain Schwartz was asked by an XRP community member on X if there was a blockchain that had lost its genesis block. 
As a countermeasure, the Ripple CTO brought up the uncertainty around Ethereum's Genesis block. Even while Ethereum has transactions that predate its formal beginnings, he stressed that they are not publicly documented. On August 3, 2016, a particular 2622 Ethereum trade was highlighted by Schwartz, which included almost $6 million. Where did that Ethereum originate from, he wondered? I can't seem to find the transaction that defines it. Members of the XRP community have pointed to transactions that demonstrate the transfer of 40,000 Ethereum at the Genesis block, which is based on theory. Schwartz admitted as much, but he emphasized that the 40,000 Ethereum had a hidden origin because of choices made while designating a theory as Genesis block. Such decisions, according to Schwartz, are arbitrary. This includes the XRP ELS Genesis block, which starts at ledger 32,569. Similar decisions, he argued, were taken in theoretical Tim's case to conceal funding origins. When questioned if the 40,000 Ethereum coins sprang out of nowhere, Ripple's chief technology officer stressed that, from the standpoint of the public blockchain, they did. Ethereum insiders, he emphasized, have greater information on the subject. However, Schwartz verified that there were no transactions in the Genesis ledger of the chain, which is relevant because the XRP ledger was one of the original architects. Still, he claims that 534 transactions were included in the initial 32,570 ledgers, transactions that are likely gone at this point. A senior software developer at Republic's, Adore, revealed the cause behind the loss of Genesis Block, before Schwartz responded to Mann's original query about my UCAV. She pointed out that ledger troubles were caused by the original set of XRPL servers experiencing consistent setup and simultaneous memory depletion. Some have raised doubts about the Genesis block strangeness before. In the past, XRP's detractors have voiced their disapproval of the distribution plan, implying that there may be ulterior motivations for the lack of previous ledgers. Such assumptions have been repeatedly disproven by Schwartz. Plus XRP. In October 2013, Holder posed a comparable inquiry on the Bitcoin Stack Exchange forum. Once the XRP ledger went online a year ago, in his quest to understand why the network was launched, he banned 32,570 in response to this question, Schwartz mentioned that ledger hits were lost because to a malfunction that impacted Ripple servers. Although there was an attempt to gather data, there was not enough to recreate the ledger. He told the user that the lost ledgers from 1 to 32,570 did not matter for the ordinary user of XRPL. In addition, Schwartz offered a more comprehensive historical overview in a December 2019 piece, highlighting the development of the XRP ledger from its live debut in June 2012. After the ledger went online, he claims, they had to patch issues. The data from the XRP ledger was saved in ledgers 1 to 32,570 last week, according to Schwartz, because of these issues and reset exercises performed on the network. On the other hand, he guaranteed that the original 100 billion XRP supply was not recreated during the resets. Getting down to brass tacks, is the US government very adverse to the Ripple's IPO? Does Ripple plan to expand into international markets? If you would want to be the first to know about any new developments with XRP, you can subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. At the present World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, this revelation was made in response to questions posed by a CNBC journalist. The unrelenting legal struggle with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, according to Garland House, is the reason behind the decision to investigate alternatives. In particular, Garland House revealed Ripple's interest in public listing opportunities in jurisdictions with clear and open regulations for cryptocurrency startups. As the Ripple executive pointed out, we researched other jurisdictions with more transparent regulations. The company has put its preparations for an initial public offering on hold, according to Garland House. The CEO of Ripple said that one of the biggest obstacles is the complicated regulatory environment in the US. This comes after prior remarks suggested Ripple's intended to go public after its legal battle with the SEC was over. It doesn't seem like much fun to me that Garland Holmes is attempting to go public in the US while dealing with a highly unfriendly regulator who must approve your S1. 
In addition, Garland House used the Coinbase case to further his argument against the unfriendly U.S. regulatory climate. A key point he made was that the SEC had authorized Coinbase's initial public offering registration statement. Nevertheless, Coinbase was later sued by the SEC for the very reason stated in that single complaint. And so he said, why would we want to put ourselves through a SEC that is so obviously hostile to this industry? The USDC stablecoin issuer Circle has submitted a private offering plan to the US market despite the lack of clarity around regulations. The option of an initial public offering IPO, remains open. According to Garland House, going public is not Ripple's current priority. He stressed that going public is a common way for businesses to raise money, but Ripple doesn't require any extra funding just now. Conversely, he said that the business's priority has been to provide liquidity to its stockholders, and that the CEO of Ripple's just announced that the company has repurchased $1 billion worth of shares from equity investors. Some of our backers put money into Ripple back in 2012. That makes 11 and a half years of them being involved in this arrangement. The CEO acknowledged that one of the motivations for making these Tinder offers was to supply that cash. Leave a comment with your ideas on this, I'm really interested to hear them. Prioritize giving the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and tap the notification button. Goodbye, see you later.